warm welcome to episode 27 of My Doll's House Diary. Now today I want to finish off in the guest bedroom by adding the skirting and coving and then I want to make a start in the hallways, the entrance hall and landings and construct the stairs. So let's get started. So I've cut the skirting board and I didn't go into a lot of detail with this because I've already done that when we fitted the skirting and coving in the study. So I don't want to keep going over the same thing for each room because obviously this will be the same for each room. I'll be doing skirting and coving. But obviously to see how I did the um, skirting and coving, go back to that study video and I'll put a link to that at the end because I can't remember now which um, tutorial number it was but I do go into some detail there explaining how to cut your coving and giving a few tips and things on, on cutting and numbering the back of your skirting and what have you. So I've done the skirting and again I've left 10 millimeters for the door surround when that's fitted so there and over that side as well and then I'm just looking into the back of the room there if I push that down because I've got a couple of unlevel floorboards a couple here sort of just stick up slightly I've got a bit of gapping under the skirting now in the study because I was using a light wood flooring I used a filler to fill that in but I don't really want to do that in this room because of the um, varnish that I've used for the floor or the wood dye that I used for the floor because then it, it never looks the same colour. So what I've actually got here is this wood finish stain marker and this is a dark walnut so that will match perfectly with the flooring. So let me clear this dirt out and then I'm just going to do a line of that stain marker just above the floorboards along the back there Okay, so I've given this a good shake, but just as a bit of a warning, there are some quite sort of harsh warnings on the back here. Skin irritant contains mineral spirits, product contains chemicals. So obviously always read the warnings before you're using something like this. Now I'm using this in a large, well-ventilated room. But also when I'm using them, I try not to breathe in the fumes if I can. But I'm really just going to do one line across that back bit there. But it's always a good idea just to read um, any cautions on things like this. And obviously don't, don't buy them or don't use them if you're not comfortable with that. So I'm just doing a line along the back there. I'm probably haven't got the camera in the best position there but as I move along you'll see you'll be able to see what I'm doing and I think as well this this pen's drying up a little bit now because I've had this for quite some time so I'm having to sort of press down quite hard to get the well, I'm not going to say ink but whatever it is to to come out but I, I just use it because it's really handy just for little touch-ups and things like this rather than having to get out that um, wood dye again. So can you see there I've just done a line. I'm just going to go along again and make it a little bit darker. So that will take away from the gap in underneath that piece of skirting but also I'll be having the bed along this wall bedside cabinet either side and we'll probably try and get a little chair or something in the corner so most of that will be covered but I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't too much gap in along there and of course if you don't like the idea of those pens then you could just go along with a brush and your wood stain or varnish or whatever you've used for your floor and just do a really sort of careful line along there just make sure you don't touch the wallpaper with the brush as you're working in sort of such a small area. Okay, so now I'm going to cut the coving. So that's the coving cut as well, and I'm now going to apply a coat of paint to these. But I just wanted to say, however many times I've cut coving, I always come back to my sort of template. And this is a little template I have that shows me how 
it joins and then I use that as I'm going around the room and cutting so that I know which way I need to do that cut and that's really helpful so the first time you do some coving just make yourself a little template and then you can always come back to it and just make sure that you're cutting in the right direction and if you've had a go at coving you'll know what I mean because when you're using a shaped piece of coving and it has to be the same way around each time it's really difficult to get that mitre join in the right place so that comes in really handy so I just keep that in the top drawer of my little um, unit and always pull that out when I'm doing some coving so I'm going to be using antique white emulsion for the coving and skirting and I've actually only got one little sample pot left so I'll do a coat and then I'll see how much I've got left but I, I really do need to get to, around to watering another couple of pots so that's one coat of paint on all of those pieces and I've got plenty left in that pot so I'll be able to do another coat on these and then get them fitted and whilst they're drying I want to create templates for the flooring in the entrance hall and landings. So I've cut the templates for the entrance hall and the landing and then I don't know if you remember but I talked about having the front section of the top landing as a bathroom and that back section will be the little like landing area so there's a door coming out of the guest bedroom there and there'll be a door coming into the room from sort of across that back wall I can't point because I'm holding the light and the camera and then the door coming out of the main bedroom into the bathroom as though it's a bit of an ensuite so a little bit of a strange setup with the two doors going in but I didn't want to waste one of the larger rooms as a bathroom I knew I wanted two large bedrooms so that's why I decided to put the bathroom in the small area there so hence I've just cut the template to go along the back and then let me come down so I can just pop the light down there when you're cutting the template around the stair opening leave a couple of millimeters at the back there because you don't want the wooden strips hanging over this opening otherwise your stairs won't fit nicely into place there so we'll always just leave a couple of millimeters and I've done that on the um, top landing as well so I'm now going to take these through into the craft room and start fitting the strip flooring and again I've done a separate video on the strip flooring with um, this one here in the study showed you how to fit it and how to finish it in this sort of weathered look so I won't go through the whole process again but I'll do a little bit of, of filming as I'm working on it and then I'm going to finish that in an antique pine and then I'm going to finish that in a lovely wax to give it a nice satin finish. I really like how the light is coming into the study there. Makes it sort of look like early evening. I feel as though I want to go and sit in there with a book. Anyway, enough daydreaming. Let's get these templates back into the craft room. Make a start on the floor. I was a little bit worried then when I came back in that I wouldn't have enough strip wood flooring but I've actually got these three full sheets and some spare strips as well so I've got plenty to do the entrance hall and landings. lots of flooring now cut and the little sort of back landing as well and I really like how that looks and I can't wait to get a coat of wood dye on these so that's what I'll do next so I've got here the antique pine wood dye and I've given that a good shake and then dispense some into this lid 
and that's just so that I don't have to keep dipping the brush in and out of the tin it's just easier to get to but when you do dispense it keep giving it a little swirl around as well as you're working otherwise all the sort of colour goes into the bottom and you just get a sort of wishy-washy orange colour and I've also got here some pieces of kitchen towel ready to use I don't want this to be too dark so I want to apply it and then sort of immediately wipe it off. So I'm just getting a sort of light version of the wood dye. So I'm going to do sort of three or four strips at a time and then wipe it off. And I love how easily this wood dye goes on. And just a few sort of sweeps of the brush, you've got a really good area coated. take the dry kitchen towel and just wipe that off. So you're just taking off the excess there. I'm just leaving a bit of a tint really. And that really is as dark as I want to go so I'm not going to apply a second coat. And I really like that colour. So that's the entrance hall floor now done. So I'm going to leave that to dry and then I'll probably sand that back a little bit before I apply the wax. I don't know if you can pick it up on camera but there's just some slightly uneven places on there. So now I'll do the two landing pieces. So whilst the flooring sheets are drying I'm going to sand the skirting and coving pieces and then give them a second coat of paint. So I've applied the second coat of paint to the skirting and coving pieces and whilst that's drying I want to sand the flooring. So this is now completely dry and I'm going to use a 180 grade sandpaper but I'm not going to use a block because I don't want to sand it back too harshly so I'm just going to use my hand. So that has evened out the colour and taken the colour back a little bit as well so it looks more natural. And I'm now going to use a soft brush to remove the sanding dust. I'm now going to use my scribe tool to create the nail holes in each end of each strip. And again, you've seen me do this before in the flooring video. To finish the flooring, I'm going to be applying a layer of clear wax. And this is just clear shoe polish and I'm going to use a kitchen towel to apply it. Now I'm actually going to do this once the flooring is in place, once it's um, been glued into place and the glue has dried, but I just wanted to try it in a little area just to see how the colour will look. And that looks really nice. It's already bringing out the colour and the grain in the wood as well. So like I say, I'll just do a little area now just to see what it will look like. But I want to get this glued into place first because then I'll be putting kitchen towel on top, tiles and then weighing it down while the glue dries. There's no point in doing the whole thing at the moment. But yeah, I really like how that looks. And I really like the colour of this antique pine. So I've glued the entrance hall flooring into place. I put some kitchen towel down and then some ceramic tiles which then helps distribute the weight 
of the books which I've used this time rather than tins and I've really weighed that down and I'll leave that overnight now I'll go and get on with the landing flooring so that's now all three pieces of flooring glued into place and being weighed down there and I now want to begin attaching the skirting and coving in the guest bedroom has now dried into place and I left that drying for a few days so that's been drying over the weekend and I now want to apply a coat of wax to each floor so I've got here my clear shoe polish or clear wax you could also use furniture wax for this and if you use a scented one that gives it a nice smell as well in the doll's house and I'm just going to apply it in small circular motions I really like applying wax because even on this sort of craft wood it brings out the grain in the wood it adds a nice sheen to it as well you can even see there it's adding that nice satin sheen to it and this soaks right into the wood so you don't have to then worry about gluing things into place although I won't be gluing the stairs to the floor they will just sort of sit in so that I can remove them if I need to and I've been trying to get um, an arched window for that window in the back there and I ordered one in and it was far too big the measurements I've taken although they were correct it was for the internal part of the frame so the external part which I thought would fit into that opening was about a centimetre bigger all the way around so I'm still searching but if I can't find an exact one one of my ideas was to square the window off so put in sort of like a batten across there and fill that arch at the top and then just build a square window I'm not sure if I'd be able to build an arched window I could have a go I suppose but if not then squaring it off is an option we'll, we'll perhaps have a go at doing an arched one so make sure you've got a good even coat on there and then you can take a clean piece of kitchen towel and then just give that a buff off and that will just take off any excess I really like that antique pine um, wood dye I was worried it might look a little too dark because I want to have these rooms really sort of light or light wood furniture and everything but then I thought well it's better that the flooring's a little bit darker because then that will be a nice contrast against the furniture and the stairs and I'm really looking forward to doing those stairs so once I've done this I'll show you the pieces that I've bought to construct the stairs, then we'll actually get on with them. I'll stick that little flap of paper back down. I keep pulling it off every time I go near it. And if you get any little bits of kitchen towel stuck in between the strips, you can just use your soft paintbrush to wipe those out okay so that's the central landing done I'll do the other two and then we'll have a look at those stairs so I've just stood the stairs in place there and I'll be having them in the middle landing and on the ground floor but then I won't be having any in the little top area if you remember this will be blocked off so we won't see it anyway although I will have a probably have an open door coming into the bathroom or not an open door I'll have a door there but I'll leave it open so that you can just see through and then I had an idea about building a set of ladders to go up into the attic rooms just that you can see through that open door there now if I just take one of these out 
So it's just separate stairs mounted onto a piece of ply board. And you tend to get 14 steps on these standard sets of stairs. And I think that's just to allow for the different heights of doll's house rooms. Sometimes the rooms can be a little bit higher and then you would need the 14 steps. But in my doll's house, I only actually need 13 of them. So if I just slot that back in again and show you what I mean. So if you can see there, there's one step overhanging at the top there. But down here at the bottom, that's, that's just about right because we don't want it obviously butted right up to the door like that because we're going to have to put our door surround in there and that will be about 10 millimetres and then we want a little bit of space before the stairs start. So if I was to line that top one up you can see how far down they come and they actually overlap the door opening. So I'm going to cut off the top step and that will be the first job and then I'll show you how to make a little lip on that top one which then slots over your floor at the top. So let's go back into the craft room and we'll do that and I'll also show you the banisters, rails and spindles that I've bought. So to construct your stairs you're going to need your actual staircase. You're going to need some banister rail. I've got three pieces of this. If I just show you that from the end there, can you see how that is shaped with a little cutout section in the centre there? And that will be for the tops of your spindles. So again, when you're choosing a spindle, choose one that has a nice narrow end that will then fit into that gap. Now I'd chosen some nice spindles, but they had a square top. I really liked the design of them, but they would have been too difficult to then shape at the top to fit nicely beneath the banister rail. So do think about that when you're choosing your spindles. So that was the spindle there, and I've gone for a round one. And I wanted something that was quite narrow, so quite thin and looked more elegant. And the same with the newel posts. I've chosen a sort of quite thin newel post. And these go on the first and last stair and they support the banister rail. And then we would angle the rail well, that way. And then as we go up the stair, each of the spindles sits sort of in the middle of the stair and then pokes into the underside of the banister rail. So they are quite easy to put together. The only thing, as with everything, can be getting the angles right, but we'll talk about that as we go along. And I just wanted to remind you of the colours that I'm going to be using on the stairs. So this is one of the images that I saved when I was looking for inspiration for the entrance hall and landings. And this is how I want to do the stairs. So the newel posts and spindles will be in cream, and then I'll use the antique pine wood die for the banister rail and for the stair treads. I think that will look really nice. And I'll also be making some safety rails for both stair openings. So I've got extra of the newel posts and of the spindles and I'll be using the rail for that as well. But we'll come on to that once we've completed the actual stairs. So let's begin by removing that top stair. And to do that I'm going to use my razor saw and we are just going to cut across that top stair like that using the next stair down as a guide. So we'll keep the razor on top of that stair there. And although it seems like we're cutting through a thick piece of wood, we are actually only cutting through that piece of plywood underneath. And I think that's some sort of MDF. It's, it's like a sort of um, chipboard. So it's quite thin and quite easy to cut through. And we want to go that way because we actually want, we don't want to go down like that. So we've got a slope there. We want to go across so that we're continuing this stair along there like that. And then we'll have a nice flat base to stick our little piece of wood to to create an overhang so that we can then lodge that 
into that top opening. So you just want to get a nice firm hold on your stairs, lay your saw across the top of that next stair, make sure it's nice and flat along there and you want to keep it in that position as well and then just start sawing. It will take you a little while to get through but just take your time, keep the blade flat against that top stair and you will get through. There. Still a little bit attached on this side. I'm just going to ease that off. Like that. And there, we've got a nice flat edge there. So where I pulled it, I've got a little bit of a, a ridge, but I'm just going to sand that flat using a 180 grit sandpaper. So just hold the stair against your sandpaper, keeping it flat against it and then sweep it along. Until you've got a nice flat surface along the top there. And then I just noticed that a lot of these stairs are quite rough as well, so I'm going to get a smaller piece of sandpaper now and go along and sand each individual stair. We're now going to attach a piece of wood to create that little lip at the back of the stair so that you can sit that over the opening and that that will hold the stairs into place and then they won't keep sliding forwards. So cut a piece of wood that is as wide as your stair and then you want to have about a five millimetre overhang at the back there. So just add on another five mil or 13 sixty-fourths of an inch. And then take the piece in your hand and using a piece of fine grade sandpaper just round over that front edge just at the top of the piece of wood. For this I'm using a 0.8mm thick sheet wood, that's 1 32nd of an inch, so it's sort of like that veneer wood. Just sand the surface of that piece as well. Apply glue to the top stair. And I want to sit this extra piece just back from that sort of front rounded lip so I don't apply the glue right along the edge there. that into place. Got a bit of time to manoeuvre if you need to to make sure you've got a nice straight edge along each side. And I'm just back from that front rounded edge. Grab a piece of masking tape and you can fix that into place. Make sure it's staying where it should. And then pull the masking tape nice and tightly. and that can then be left to dry. Whilst those stairs are drying, I'm going to apply wood dye to my banister rails and I'm going to apply it to the whole rail, so before I've sort of cut them to size. So again, I've dispensed a bit of the wood dye into a little lid, just to make it easier to get to. Do, do remember to keep sort of swirling that around as you're using it so that the sediment doesn't settle and I gave that a good shake before I poured it. And also make sure you've got all your things out of the way because wood dye can tend to splash a bit. And I've also got here some pieces of kitchen towel so that I can wipe the wood dye off once I've applied it.
And I sanded these as well before I started. And I just wipe it off like that straight away because I want the lightest shade possible. I'm also just going to put a little bit on the underside because I don't want any natural wood showing along the stairs or the top of the spindles. My banister rails are drying over there. And I'm going to make a start painting the spindles and newel posts. So I need 11 spindles for each staircase. So the top and bottom stair will have the newel post on and then the rest will be the spindles. So just count the number of treads, take off two for the top and bottom and that's how many spindles you'll need per set of stairs. And then I've just been into that box that I kept of the bits I took out of my doll's house when I started redoing it. And these are the safety rails that go around each stair opening. And I wanted to pull this out because I need to know how many spindles I need for each of these. And it's 13, so we've got five along there and eight along there. And I'll redo it exactly the same as this one, but using my newel posts and spindles. So I need four newel posts for the stairs and then I'll need a further six for each of these well a further three for each of these so six all together and another 26 spindles for this as well so in total I've got 48 spindles now if you're going to be doing the same as I'm doing here then you'll need 48 spindles and they normally come in packs of 12 so you'll need four packs of those and then you'll need 10 newel posts I think they come in packs of four as well, so you'll have a couple left over, but we can always find use for those in other projects. Okay, so I'm now going to paint my spindles and newel posts using the cream paint, and I've dispensed some here into a pot, far too much, but I've got that huge, big um, 10 litre pot of this one, if you remember, because this is what we used for our, our living room. So I've put that in there and I'm just going to paint each one and then rest them on my tray to dry. And a good way to do it is to do it in halves like that. So do the bottom half, let that dry and then you can come back and hold on to that and then do the top half. It just saves getting paint all over your fingers. So that's one half of each of my spindles and newel posts painted. So I've just rested them there on my plastic tray to dry. And I've just popped some cling film over the paint there to keep it fresh. And I now want to do the wood dye on the stairs. And I just want to do that sort of tread section on each of the stairs. So I've masked up each stair so that I've got a line along the edge and then underneath each tread. So let me show you how I did that. So I just cut off some strips of masking tape and you want them to be long enough to fit around the stair and then tuck onto the back of the stair. And then I cut each of them in half lengthways. So take one of those halves and you want the straight edge so that it's going along underneath the tread there. Press it down and you can use your thumbnail as well just to get under there and really press it underneath that tread. And then you can tuck it around the back and make sure that you're sort of creating a straight line along there. So as long as your tape is straight underneath the tread on the front there, you should then create that straight line along the side edge 
and then just tuck that round underneath. Do the same at the other side. And I'm only starting in the middle there because it was easier to fit that bit on camera close up. And then take the second long length. Now I want the straight edge along the bottom of that stair. And it's just easier than measuring out the tape because the, the half isn't quite as wide as the, the front of the stair. And then again, wrap that around the side like that and tuck it in underneath. And that way you're masking off the whole of the front of the stair and then you're creating that line at the side there so that we can apply our wood dye along the side of that tread and make it look like one piece like that. So do that with each stair. Okay, so I've given the wood dye a bit of a swirl around and a stir and I've got some kitchen towel here again handy. Now I think sometimes having masking tape on can give you a false sense of security so you're sort of tempted to slosh it on thinking that you're okay because the masking tape is there but do still be careful because especially when you're using liquid like wood dye it can seep under your masking tape so that's why I said about using your nail to really press that down under there and make sure it's really pressed down along the side as well. Now because of that I'm just going to be using a detail brush and I've got my number one brush here and I'm just going to be really careful with it. I'm going to try and stay above the masking tape and use it more of a guide than as a, a sort of protector if you know what I mean. So just do one stair at a time, just be really careful. If any does seep underneath the tape then the emulsion paint is quite thick so we should be able to cover it. just worth being careful in the first place. So that's the first set of stairs done and even just with that masking tape on I'm really pleased with how that looks. I can picture how that's going to look now with the paint and I really like that, that style. So I'm going to leave that masking tape on until I've done the second set and then we'll pull that back and see how that looks. Okay, so the second set of stairs is now drying, so I want to start removing the masking tape just really carefully. And already that's quite a nice sharp line. I was worried because there was it looked as though there was a bit of um, wood dye had seeped under the tape, but it must have just sort of been in between the two pieces, which is good.
I always think it's quite good fun removing masking tape. <laughs> Yeah, little bits there where, where we haven't got an exact line underneath the stairs there. But because I've only done one coat of wood dye, I'm pretty confident that we can cover that up with the emulsion paint. Even though it is cream, it's going to be thicker than the wood dye, so we should be able to cover all those little marks. And at the side of the steps, the line has gone a little bit fuzzy, and that's because the side of the steps is the wood that's against the grain. So along here is in the direction of the grain, and then at the side there it's against, so it's kind of soaked in underneath the tape and sort of created this fuzzy line. But again, we'll be able to sort that out with our cream, cream coloured paint. A bit of a line there as well. But I was expecting that there would be some sort of seepage, for use of a better word. Because, like I say, the wood dye is such a, a thin liquid. But overall, I'm happy with how it's looking. So once we get the, the spindles and everything on, it's going to look really good. Hmm, not too bad at all, really. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the spindles and the newel posts now and finish off the paint on those and then I'll remove the masking tape from the second set of stairs and then we can start actually painting the stairs. I'm going to paint obviously along the sides but I'm also going to paint this back bit in the cream as well. So that first coat of paint has now dried so I'm going to give each of these a gentle sand and then I shall apply a second coat. Now for the spindles. So these have all now been sanded and then I used my soft paintbrush to brush off the sanding dust and I'm about to apply the second coat. Now that might seem like a bit of a long-winded job and rather tedious but it really is worth doing as you'll get a much better finish. So the second coat is now applied and I'm so glad that's done and out of the way. And then I'll actually sand those as we apply them to the stairs. So I'll give those the second sand at that stage. And I always find it's a really good idea when you've got a sort of quite long, tedious job to do. Just time yourself how long it takes you to do maybe three or four. And then you'll know how long it's going to take you to do all of them. And it just won't feel like it's going to take you forever. So I'm now going to paint the stairs. So along the front there and along the side. And I only actually need to do the one side because this other side will be butted up against the wall. So that won't be seen. Now, I'm not going to use any masking tape this time. I think it's going to be a little bit too fiddly. And I also don't want it to pull any of the wood dye off. So I've, I'm just going to use a small brush and just going to be really careful. So that's the first coat of paint on the first set of stairs and it's really difficult not to get it onto the wood dye but I did discover after dabbing my brush in the middle of a step by mistake that you can actually remove the paint from the wood dye using a little bit of water and a cotton bud. 
so that's quite good to know and the paint had dried as well I didn't spot it until it had actually dried so so a little bit messy but I'm going to do the second coat and then I'll go along and give that a tidy up so clear up the wood dyed areas that have got any bits of paint on them so not looking too bad but I always find it's not enjoyable painting when you have to be super careful again it's another one of those sort of tedious jobs so I'm going to leave that one to dry now and make a start on the second set and then come back and do the second coat on here so the stairs are now completely dry and I've left those dry in for a couple of days but now I've come back to them I don't think I'm really happy with the finish I like the look I like the antique pine on the cream but I'm really not happy with the sides of the stairs and I spoke to you before how the sides are the sort of end of the grain so the wood is a little bit bobbly and as well with the two types of wood the actual sort of triangle for the stair is a different wood to the backing which is sort of like a chipboard the paint has gone a different colour and I don't like the fact that I haven't got a definite line across the piece and again that's because of the grain the direction of the grain in the wood so anyway I've decided I'm going to paint the whole staircase in cream so I'm going to sand away the antique pine wood dye and then I'll probably give it two to three coats of the cream paint all over it's all along the sides on the back and then as we did at the top here to create that lip for where the stairs will sit on the sort of floor or the opening to the next floor I'm going to use that 0.8 millimetre sheet wood and do a little sort of top for each tread exactly the same as we did there but obviously it will fit exactly to the stair so we won't have as much of a line on the side here we'll just have a little line the thickness of the wood there so I still want to achieve that two-tone effect but I don't really want to do it in this way so I'll sand away the wood dye as best I can now and then hopefully get a couple of paint couple of coats of paint on there this afternoon but what I'll do as well before I start painting is actually measure up for the treads and then I can get those cut and whilst the paint's drying I can apply the wood dye to those so a little disappointing but it, you know if you're not happy with something you never will be so before you get to the stage of where you you know you've gone a bit too far fit in the the spindles or fitting the stairs into place do start again if you're not happy and that's something I've really learned from this hobby is that you, you'll never be happy with something if you're not happy with it when you first do it okay so I'll, I'll get some sandpaper and start the sanding okay so I've sanded both lots of stairs using a 180 grade sandpaper and I wasn't trying to remove the wood dye completely I just wanted to tone it down a little bit because it's quite a thick emulsion paint that I'm using so I'm pretty confident that two or three coats will cover the wood dye so I'll get my paint out in a moment but I just want to measure the treads so I know they're all going to be 65 millimeters across and what does that say there they're about 19 millimeters deep that's three quarters of an inch I'm just seeing if they are actually all the same if they're out it's by less than half a millimeter so I'm going to do the treads 18 millimeters deep so 65 by 18 millimetres and I'll need to do 24 of those and then as we did on that top lip that we created I'll round over the front edge of each of those and then I can actually just stick them to a painting sheet and paint them all like that um, apply the wood dye like that so that won't take too long but I am going to get the paint out now and apply the first coat of cream and this paint has been standing for a day and a bit as well so I'm going to give that a stir so that's the first coat of paint applied to both lots of stairs 
and that's given quite a good coverage for one coat so I'm pretty confident that two or three coats will completely cover the wood dye. So I'm going to cut the treads now and then apply a coat of wood dye to them. So I've cut 24 stair treads from 0.8mm thick sheet wood and that's one thirty second of an inch, so just like a veneer really. And then I've gone along one long edge, which will be at the front of the stair, and just um, sanded at a 45 degree angle, just to give it a tiny little lip along the front there. Well, not so much as a lip, but a sort of rounded, rounded edge. And that will just make it look more finished than just having a square edge. So just sweep your paper along at a 45 degree angle and I'm using a 500 grade sandpaper. Pop that down on your work surface and then sand the whole surface using small circular motions. And that gives you a nice smooth surface for the wood dye. And then use a soft brush to get rid of the dust. I'm doing it off camera because I've just done all of those and I don't want to flick dust on them again. And now I want to attach these to a piece of card so I can apply the wood dye. So I've attached some strips of masking tape here, sticky side up, onto a piece of card. So I've just stuck them down at the ends with some extra pieces of tape. And I've done three strips so I can put eight treads per strip. That's just to space them out because you need a bit of room around them so that you can get into the sides with your brush because obviously those areas are all going to be visible when they're in place. So leave a bit of space between them as well. Probably left a bit too much space there so I'll just pop that one over. So I've got a little bit of wood dye left in my pot which I put um, cling film over. So I'm just going to give that a good um, sort of swirl around before I take the cling film off. I probably won't have enough here but I'll just use this bit up first and then dispense a little bit more into this lid. And when you're applying the wood dye make sure, as I said earlier, you get all around the edges so that there won't be any natural wood visible. And I'm just going to do four at a time like that and then use my kitchen towel to blot that off just to keep the colour nice and light. So that's one coat of wood dye applied to each of the stair treads. So I'm now going to put those to one side to dry. So once the paint on the staircase had completely dried, I applied a second coat along the edge and along the front of the sort of stair lip. And I think that's given a really good coverage. I'm going to give it a gentle sand now, just to remove any of this sort of uneven paint along the edges where the paint has congealed when I've gone over again with my brush. And then I want to paint the back and I'll just give the back of each staircase one coat of cream paint because that's not going to be seen, but it will create more light in that area. But when you are painting the back, just make sure that the side of the stairs that's going to be visible hasn't got any congealed paint along the edge. So just go over when your brush is almost dry and just go along this edge here and take off any paint that may have dripped over from the back. So I'm now going to leave those to dry. As we've used such a fine wood for the treads, be really careful when you're removing them from the masking tape otherwise you might split the wood. So just really take your time and support them as you're pulling them off the tape. So my stairs and my treads are now dry so I'm now going to attach the treads and I just had a quick go to see if I could um, 
clamp them on once they're in place and because of the shape of the stairs you can't do that so I'm just going to give them a really good press as I go along so the only thing as you go is to make sure that you've got your rounded edge remember we sanded off that front edge at the front of the stair okay so let's do the first one my rounded edge is there so I'll turn that round let's just start at the top so I'm just making sure that I've got a flush edge along this side and this is the side that would be butted up against the wall so I don't want any overhang there I only say that because I've tried a couple and although I cut them all the same length a couple of them do hang over and it's by not even half a millimetre, it's by a tiny amount, but if you do have any overhang then of course you can trim them before you stick them on, but otherwise just make sure it's at the edge of the stair that is going to be exposed. Okay, so I'm just pressing that into place. I'll just remove that excess glue from along the front there. And because I can't fit clamps, and I don't really want to start putting masking tape on them because I don't want to pull off the wood die. I'm just going to sort of adopt the press and hold system. It takes a little bit longer, but it'll be worth it because then you won't have any sort of wood trying to curl up, curl up woods. I think that looks really nice. Let me just show you from that other side, from the nicest edge. I really like how that looks and I had to sand this top piece because I'd applied masking tape and that had actually pulled up some of the wood so I've sanded it but because it's gone quite pale you can see the difference in colour there I'll probably just apply another thin coat of wood dye to that top one okay so let's carry on sticking these into place and my battery light has just started flashing so that's a good time to change the battery before I continue so I'll see you in a bit I'm about halfway down now but I just wanted to say I'm so glad I changed my mind on doing the treads separately I just think that looks so much neater especially from the sides there so I'm gluing these on and then I'm just sort of rubbing my thumbs along a few times just to really press them into place and then I'm just holding and well, the sun's just come out probably only for 30 seconds if that and they're all gluing down really nicely but do be your own judge because if you're using a slightly different type of wood or a different type of glue you may get different results so if you find that they're sort of lifting up at the corners and not gluing down as you're going along then do use a little bit of masking tape and make sure you use a low tack one so that it's not going to pull your wood die off or splinter the wood but I'm really pleased with how these are going on and how they're looking and see how I said to you about a little bit of an overhang I don't know if you can pick that up on camera let me turn it around that way it might be easier to see so I've got just on a couple of them that's probably about the the biggest one there about half a millimeter but I think that's okay I think some treads would slightly come over like that and I think that looks quite nice I'm certainly not going to sort of try and cut them off or sand them off because I think that will do more harm than good but yeah really pleased with how they're looking so I'll carry on with these and then do the next set of stairs and I'm really looking forward to getting the spindles into place I think they're going to look really good so we're now going to attach the spindles newel posts and banister and I've done the first set of stairs really as a practice run and I'm so glad I did because I've picked up quite a few tips through doing it it wasn't easy but hopefully I'll be able to make the process a little bit easier for you by sharing really what went wrong for me but I'm really happy with the end result and I have tried them in place and they look really good but let's get the second set done and then we'll go and put them both into place I've propped my stairs onto a little box 
just because I found it easier to attach the spindles when you've got a little bit of an angle to work at. So the first thing to do is measure the width of your spindle. Mine is five millimetres and I want to put them centrally actually onto the tread so not the whole stair but just the tread. If you've done a tread and then you were to measure the whole stair and half that they wouldn't look as though they were in the centre so just go by the width of the tread. So you want to deduct the width of your spindle from the width of your tread and then divide that by two and for me that worked out at six millimetres so I've got a piece of six millimetre strip here six by three strip or one quarter by one eighth of an inch strip and I'm going to use that as a spacer and then sit my spindle in front of it and I then know that my spindle will be in the centre of each tread so it's the width of your tread minus the width of your spindle divide that by two and that will be the width of the spacer that you need to use I've also made a little pencil mark on my spacer there which is one millimetre from the end one thirty second of an inch and that's just because you don't want to place the spindle right along the edge of the stair and the reason for that is just because the spindle will sit obviously in the middle of your banister rail and at each side of my banister rail that measures two millimetres. Now most spindles are going to be around this size either four or five millimetre wide so I would just advise doing a little line at one millimetre from the edge as well. Now I haven't got an exact calculation to give you here but that's just just how it worked out on mine so do have a think about that. Okay so you need to have your glue ready, a cocktail stick to apply it and one to remove the excess glue from around the bottom of the spindle. You'll then need a piece of harsher sandpaper and I'm using a 180 and that's to sand the bottom of the spindle just to make sure there's no paint sitting under there because you want a nice flat bottom and then you'll want your finer grade sandpaper to sand your spindle and I've actually just been putting mine in like that and then gently sort of spinning them round inside the sandpaper and then you'll also want to go around that little top bit with your sandpaper just to make sure there's again no congealed paint and that that's going to sit nicely in the groove under the banister rail and you're now ready to attach so make sure you remove the sanding dust from the bottom there apply a bit of glue and then we're on the second stair up remember because the first one is for our newel post as long as you press the spindle flat against the stair the spindle will be upright Give it a good firm press, hold for a minute, or maybe not a minute but sort of 30 seconds or so. You can then carefully remove your spacer, and get rid of any excess glue, again just being really careful all the time. One of the things I found um, was happening on my trial run was that I was constantly knocking the spindles off. You just need to be really careful and as you're working your way up the stairs make sure you don't knock them and you're then ready to attach the next one. Okay, sand the bottom and you only need to give that a few sweeps because you don't actually want to take away from the length of the spindle. And sand your spindle make sure the top is smooth, no excess paint, get rid of your dust, put your little spacer into position and you're going alongside the so that it's flush with the stair not the tread because like I said earlier some of those may be overhanging slightly so always make sure it's flush with this 
part of the stair rather than the tread. Apply a bit of glue. And then attach your next one. Press it down so it's sat flat against the stair. Helps to hold onto the stairs whilst you're doing it as well, so you're sort of pushing from both angles. And then continue your way up the stairs. So all of the spindles are now in place. And don't forget to leave that top stair clear as well, because our second neural post will be on there. Now one thing I learned from doing the first set of stairs is that you can't race on with this. You really do need to let the glue dry before even attempting to fit the banister rail. So leave it for at least an hour if you can. I've got another couple of projects to be getting on with, so I'm going to leave this for as long as I can, and then we'll come back and get the banister rail in place so we can make the cut, the angled cut for the newel posts. So for this next bit I just found when I was doing the first lot of stairs that it's so much easier if you lay the stairs on your work surface like this with the spindles closest to your work surface so flat down like that when I tried to do it sort of just holding it in my hand my I broke almost all of the spindles off and had to start again so I had to use my taller tripod which I usually use for my doll's house diary when I'm actually working inside the doll's house so I'm sorry that you can see the feet here but this is the lowest position that I can get it on so my little desk tripod is too small and this one's a little bit too big really, but this is going to have to do. So I've also lined up the stairs here so that I'm using the lines on my cutting mat to make sure that my spindles are upright and the sort of horizontal part of the stair will also be in line with your horizontal line. So just get it set up like that. And then we're going to insert the top of the spindles into the rail and you want to make sure that you've just got a bit of rail down here, probably about level with your first stair. So going like that. So just push it back a little bit. And it doesn't matter that you've got a lot at that end because we'll do that bit next. And what we're doing here is just getting the rail into position and then we're going to cut the newel post because it will be a little bit too tall, or mine were anyway, but this is a good exercise, whatever sort of um, newel post you've got, whatever height. So just get them all pushed in. And you just really need to be careful here. So just be really gen gentle with them all. So I'm just pushing the tops there into that groove in the center of the banister rail. Some go in a little bit easier than others. And this is where it's a good idea to keep your eye on your lines on your cutting mat to make sure that as you're pushing them in, you're not sort of knocking them, you know, from the upright position. You're not sort of knocking them skew with. So I'm just sort of clicking them in and you'll hear like a little satisfying click as you click them in there. And then I'm just going to take two of my newel posts and I'm going to prop that end up onto one of the newel posts. So actually going under the stair and under the newel post there. And then I'm going to measure this first newel post. And what I'll actually do now is transfer the camera onto the smaller tripod so I can zoom in on this section here and show you what I'm doing. OK, so if I was just to put the banister rail on top of the stair there, or the newel post, sorry, on top of the stair, you'll see that the banister rail is far too low down because this part of the banister rail needs to be sitting on this square at the top of the newel post. So you want the newel post to be sitting right at the edge of your tread 
and then move it down behind the stair you can see it going in behind the stair there until this banister rail is just inside that top square now I know you may have a different um, newel post to me but use this system so get your newel post lined up and if you're using those shorter chunkier ones you might find that it fits without having to make any adjustments but if you've got a longer narrow one like this then you probably will have to make an adjustment so I'm just lining it up sort of from bird's eye view and I'll pick the camera up in a moment and show you so you want the newel post to be sitting behind the stair and then so that that bit when we cut it will be butted up against that top square so just take your time to sort of jiggle it around a bit so once you're happy that that's in the right position so this piece once I've cut the mitre angle will be sitting on that square at the top there but obviously on that side and then if I show you from the front, you can see how much I need to cut off. So I'm actually going to make my pencil mark on the front of the leg there and just above the tread. And that's where I want to then saw it off. So I'll make a line there. And then if I come back up here, Move it around again if you need to. Keep just adjusting it until it's exactly right. I want to draw a line on my banister rail. So at the top and bottom of it there, level with the edge of that newel post. And then I want to go underneath like that and make a little line on the rail under there as well just to make sure that when I've got it in the mitre block I'm in exactly the right position and then go to the top and do that as well I hope I'm not making you dizzy moving you around like this so I've got my line to cut the banister rail and I've got a little line there to cut my newel post so let's do that now when you move the when you take the banister rail off just be really careful again when you're popping those spindles out of the groove so i've got my newel post in my mitre block here so i'm just going to make that straight cut across the bottom like that pop that to one side i'll sand that off in a moment and then bring in your banister rail and there's my line across there so I need to put it in at the angle I want to make the cut just after that pencil line so make sure you're happy with the position before you start cutting I'm holding the banister rail tightly into place and pushed flat against the sort of top of the mitre block so that I get the correct angle like that and we can then go back to our stairs so you can then sit the newel post where it should go so right at the front of the stair and then pop all your spindles back in to the banister like that and now we can measure up for the top one now I'm just going to prop the stairs up again so I've propped up the back of the stairs there with another newel post so I know I've got the height right and I've just tucked the top newel post underneath the banister rail so that's where I want it to sit now you can move it about move it backwards and forwards until you get the banister rail again in that top section and you'll find that it won't go to the back of the stairs otherwise your railing is going to be too high so it even goes over the top of the newel post there so bring your newel post forward 
until, you, until that part of the banister rail is sitting in that front section. And we don't need to trim this one, and that's just because of the angles. And then when we come to do our safety railings, we'll be able to use a full-sized spindle. And once we've made that sort of square, that will sit beside that one. So what we want to do now is draw that line again. Once we're happy with the positioning, so all of your spindles are popped into place, and then you can do that line again on your banister rail for where we want to make that mitre cut. And go underneath again and do your little line under there. I just realised I wasn't on camera and my battery light's flashing so I'm trying to hurry now before it runs out, before I have to put the spare in. So that's where we'll make our mitre cut and then we can actually come back and glue everything together. So I've done the mitre cut in the top of the banister rail now and I'm now going to glue the bottom newel post into place on the stair. I just sand it along the bottom of here as well and I'm just sort of looking around to find the nicest side which I want facing the front. So I'm going to glue that into place right along the front of that tread push it into place and again this is where it helps to line things up against your grid on your cutting mat although if you've made the cut at the bottom straight then it should be sitting straight really good firm press. Okay so you now want to apply a little dot of glue to the top of each spindle. Lay that back down. So now apply a bit of glue to the end of your banister rail. To the mitered end. Like and then you can pop it all back into place. So get the rail lined up where it should be sitting on that first um, newel post. And again, just be really careful with your spindles here. Right, so this is take two because I just knocked not only the newel post out of place but three rails higher up. So let's go again. Now this is the trickiest part, getting that lined up and then again popping all of the top of the spindles back into place. But just take your time, be really careful. Just pop the tops in and you'll find that tops lower down might start popping out of place. It is quite tricky. Once all the tops are in, it should be okay. I'm sorry if I'm off camera at the moment, but I just want to get them all popped in, which I think I've done. So I've lined up the banister rail there at the edge of that null post and that's a bit weak down there so I'm going to press it into place in a moment and then I've just popped the spindles in and as you can see that one's trying to spring out so just give it a gentle little press so I'm sort of pressing in and up all the way along the rail And when I was first doing this and I hadn't let the glue dry at all, I just sort of cracked on. All of the spindles were coming off and it was really frustrating. But that time it seemed to have worked okay. You then want to press the banister rail, the cut part, against the square on that first normal post. So I'm just sort of pushing it downwards. And then I want to make sure that that's... Now the only other way you could do it, which would take a lot longer, but it would be 
a lot easier in the end at this stage is to drill a hole in your stair and in the newel post and spindles and then use a little pin just to support it and strengthen it and that when it was all sort of falling apart when I did the first lot that that was going to be my sort of plan B but I just sort of thought right let the glue dry off and then try again and that seemed to have worked so I'm just going to carefully apply a bit of glue on the end of that rail all about just being really gentle with it all and then on the base of my newel post and again use the lines on your mat so get that top bit lined up and it's a little bit lower actually than I would like it and I think I that's because I can still see the pencil line above where I've made the cut or in front of where I've made the cut. Let me just sit that straight so I can make sure right, so the normal post needs to go back a little bit. I've lined up the stair horizontally with the horizontal lines on there. So yeah, the rail is a little bit lower than where I'd like it, but it's still attaching. And that's because I made the cut in the wrong place by about half a millimetre. So you do need to be really particular with your angled cuts as well. Final press there just to make sure that that's attached. And see what I mean about that being a little bit lower than I would have liked it. Let's have a look from that side. It, I mean it looks okay. You wouldn't really be able to tell that that was wrong just from sort of glancing in but I would have liked that to have been slightly higher up on the newel post there but otherwise yeah not looking too bad actually so the first set are now in the doll's house so I'm going to go and put this set in as well and I had wanted to add another coat of clear wax to the um, or a coat of clear wax to the wood dyed bit so the banister rail and the treads but I'm not going to do that at the moment not until this glue has completely dried so I'll let that all settle and then we'll do that in the next video and also in that next video I'll be recreating those safety rails so we'll be remaking these but obviously using our new spindles and banister rail but I've already started editing this video and I know it's quite a long one already so we'll leave that until the next video which I'll try not to leave too long this time. I'm really pleased with how they look. I really love the colours. I think they look really nice against the floor and the colour of the walls. I like how it looks just going into the study there as well. So I hope that was quite helpful to you. I was really sort of learning as I went along as well there, but I hope you picked up a few tips for your own stairs. And I think doing them in this two-tone effect is a really nice way of doing them as well. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it there then, and we'll do those safety rails in the next episode and finish off in the hallways. Okay, so that's it for today. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. And if you're enjoying this series, My Doll's House Diary, you might also like my 112th scale shop series, which you'll find over on my Patreon channel. And your support over on Patreon means that I can continue to share videos, not only on my Patreon channel, but also here on YouTube. So in the next episode we'll carry on in the entrance hall and landings and we'll get the skirting and coving fitted and maybe we'll do a few other bits and pieces around the house as well. So I'll see you then. Bye! <laughs>